Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing, ladies? Good. Yeah, how, how are you? you? Where are you? So it's I'm currently in place. Phoenix, Arizona, in, in another hotel room. Without a without a do not disturb sign on the on the door, so hopefully house housekeeping doesn't uh, barge in during the interview. And I was trying to find one, but there's obviously not one in the room. It's it's kind of weird, but it's all right. But we got we, we got a great show today. Um, and without further ado, Kiana, please introduce today's guest. Today's guest is a photographer who has made it his mission to photograph and document the stories of World War II veterans. Please give a warm chief chat welcome to Jeff Reese. Hey. Hello, hello. Hey, Good hey to be Jeff, here. how are you doing Thank today? You. Doing wonderful. I'm so happy to be here and I appreciate you having me on the show. Oh, absolutely. So can you let our viewers know where you're coming to us from? I live in Birmingham, Alabama, and um, I actually just got off a 10 day road trip here and um, or up in the Midwest and just got back home yesterday. So I'm, I'm in back at home in Alabama. So uh, before we kind of get started with the interview, I, I'm, I'm looking in the background um, and, and I see, I, well, I won't even say the name of the team, but um, I'm, a, I'm an LSU <laughs> Tiger fan. Oh no. And, um, I, I, <laughs> and I, think, I think we got, I think we got, we got a game this weekend uh, yeah, I guess you it's all. a big game. My it, wife is an it, LSU big... fan. Oh, really? Man, your wife is, yeah. one, is a wonderful woman. <laughs> <laughs> she is. <laughs> Except yeah. And, and I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and the thing is, is our, our last guest that we had, he, he grew up in Baton Rouge. He's an LSU fan. So uh, we kind of hijacked the interview and, and talked about LSU for about a good uh, 15 minutes or so. But uh, I, I won't be talking about your team too much on this interview. So roll tide. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. And Jeff, so you traveled the country and captured more than 300 images of World War II veterans for Portraits of Honor. How did you come up with this idea? Well, I'm not the only person that does this, I, I had a, a little influence from a, a photographer acquaintance who lives in the UK and was doing this for uh, British World War II veterans. So um, I kind of thought to myself, well, I wonder if I can do that here. I didn't know any World War II veterans personally, at least local to me, but I thought, well, at least maybe I can find one or two, add it to my portfolio as a photographer, and that would probably be it. But um, once I met the first one uh, and was able to talk to him and hear about his service, I really knew that this is going to uh, be something that I'll want to do long term and, and meet as many of them as I can and learn their own personal stories. So you actually give the photo, the portrait that you take to the veteran. So what are some of the reactions you receive, not only from the veteran, but from their family members when they receive their picture? Yeah, I, that's the goal of this is, or behind it is for me to be able to do something using my talent to give back to them. And as a photographer, I can make a nice portrait photo for, for them and give it to them and their families. And just um, that was the goal, just to, as to give something back and in my own way, the best way I could do it. And the reactions from them and their families has been unbelievable. I 
I'm really humbled by it, but also understand what it means to them because in later years like this, you know, they don't get a chance to do something like that very often. So, um, I think what I, the reactions I get from family members, especially is, you know, this is something they'll treasure forever because they know that their, their veteran won't be around that much longer. And uh, I'm, I'm sure it's it kind of ex- I'm sure it's extremely rewarding, you know, meeting and talking with these veterans. What impact do the uh, your photography sessions have on you? At first, I didn't think about what it was going to mean for me. I just wanted to do something to give back. But being able to hear their stories, their personal stories and not just a story about a campaign or um, a hero that is written in a book somewhere. I get to hear the stories of guys who were uh, on Normandy Beach uh, or Omaha Beach at Normandy and um, flying through the skies of Europe uh, or storming a beach at Iwo Jima or Guadalcanal. And this is something that it impacts me greatly because I can look them face to face. I'm looking them in the eye and see the emotion coming back from the memories that they're sharing. I can almost feel what they're, they're feeling just by looking at their eyes. And that's what I want to, uh, capture in their faces when I do these portraits as well. Yeah, I, I couldn't even, um, well, it's, 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 you read stuff in your history le- lesson or history books, uh, even growing up, uh, when you're talking about world history and stuff, and just to, you know, be able to talk to somebody that was actually there during that time frame is, you know, you just kind of want to sit back and, and just, just let them go, right? And just, pick their brains yeah. and, and try to figure out what's going on. And I, you know, any chance, any chance I get us, you know, like I, I, we talked about, we talked about before the show. Um, yeah, we talked, I got a chance to talk to Woody Williams and, and, uh, he just passed away here recently, but man, he was, he was so full of knowledge and, and wit and he was like on his toes. Uh, conversation was just going and he was hilarious. Just a, a good interview. And, and like I said, I probably asked, you know, maybe, two questions and he took, he took it ran with the whole entire interview and it was, it was awesome. Yeah. Some of them like, like Woody are used to telling their story because they've been invited to so many places and they're accustomed to it. Others may haven't, maybe haven't shared their story in years or if ever, a lot of times family members will say, well, I, I didn't know that part of his story, or he never talked about that before. And it's amazing you know, the reactions we'll get from some of them. And you come from a military family. Your uncle died in combat during World War, World War II, I apologize. And your father was an army paratrooper in the Korean War. What role did their service play in your launching this project? It had a big effect. I mean, I think I probably would have done it even if those weren't uh, a part of uh, my family, but it, it certainly had an effect. And because I grew up having an interest in World War II and Korea and um, subsequently, you know, military history, I'm, I'm no historian at all, but I always had an interest and knowing what my uncle who I never met, of course, um, went through, I didn't really learn the whole story until after I started this project uh, a few years ago and came across a book that was written about the, uh, the ship, the destroyer escort that my uncle was on being sunk in the North Atlantic by a German U boat and got to meet the author when I was out on a road trip meeting World War II veterans. So it was uh, 
a really big deal for me to to learn that story and meet the author and just learn about everything that happened and and then a greater appreciation for what my dad went through uh, i got have been involved with um uh, world war ii airborne demonstration team so my dad was in the airborne and so i've been able to see some of the process of the training uh, that he likely went through in the late 40s and um, with his combat jumps in korea after that so we actually have many of america's heroes and their families watching us live right now what message would you like to share with them today certainly a great big thank you uh, I just have a lot of gratitude for what the veterans um, and their families go through and the sacrifices that they make to be a part of um, today's military. You know, we always talk about the guys back in World War II and, and just after being the greatest generation, but you are today's modern day great generation. And of course, there's a lot to live up to, and, but there are wonderful military um, personnel and families who, who are doing just that. No, we, we appreciate that love and support. And, um, and, and so what, what do you learn from these veterans and, and why do you feel it's so important to tell their stories? The, um, it's so important to share their stories uh, I'm so grateful that I can have the chance to do that. And today's younger generations need to hear the stories. Um, if they don't know the history, then it's, you know, the saying is, you know, we're bound to repeat it or um, gonna make some big mistakes, but these stories and just, uh, even, even their life stories, you know, before and after uh, the service that they had in World War II is really important because, you know, they came out of the Great Depression. Most of them, you know, this is a very common thread in those I meet who are came from small towns and farms for the most part, and they had nothing or very little, and they had never traveled very far from home at all. But here they were going across the other side of the world and um, fighting for their country. And most of all of them never say anything about being a hero. They will say the heroes are the ones who didn't make it back. And that's true. Um, I mean, I still call them a hero, but they only ever call themselves that. Well, I think it's important as well to to give, you know, the younger generation perspective. And so sometimes, you know, we have our own kind of struggles with what, that we deal with here in modern times and, and what we're living right now. And just to understand the challenges they had um, co coming up, you know, when, when exactly. they were our age. And it's, it's I think that's super important to be to be, to understand that, you know what, uh, the, the stuff that you're dealing with may be a slightly different, not too much different if you really kind of peel back the onion, but, um, but, but there's p people that have been through it and, and, you know, hearing their stories and, and you're not feeling alone. I was like, okay, well, if you've been through this, let me, let me talk, you know, I feel a little bit better about the situation. It's just a bunch of different, um, aspects of, you know, hearing about history or hearing about what people went through, uh, during that time frame compared to what we're going through right now. So, uh, thank you for, giving them that platform to uh, tell their story. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And so far, you've photographed more than 300 World War II veterans. Yeah. So how many do you ultimately hope to photograph? And do you feel a sense of urgency to capture as many as you can? Definitely a sense of urgency. And there's no specific number I'm trying trying to reach. I just want to reach as many as I can while I can. Uh, of those 300, maybe 300 and 
eight or 10 um, veterans that I've met so far. I'm not sure of the exact number, but probably at least 80 have passed away since I met them. And so that tells you a, it was a, a huge um, urgency to to meet the those who remain and uh, those stories have got to be shared. Um, uh, there's some amazing stories out there. And, you know, I think of all the books and the movies that could be written by some of the things that I've heard and uh, been told by these veterans. It's, it's amazing. So I got a follow on question. What's the what's the process for finding finding uh, World War Two veterans? Like, I, I don't know if it's a it's a hey, I know this person over here type thing or or is, you know, I'm sure uh, some of them are probably more easier to find because they're doing maybe podcasts or or kind of more visual. There's some that are probably out there that that aren't as as visual or, or the ones that are that kind of just out there that. You know, finding them. I'm just curious. Just you know, let me dumb down the question. <laughs> so, what's what's you know, what's the process of trying to uh, find a World War II veteran? It hasn't been hard for me at all because they've kind of come to me. Once I started this project, yeah, I would share, you know, the first veteran on social media, and somebody would see that and say, Hey, how do I get my, my father-in-law or my grandfather, uh, to be included in this? And so I would track them down and it all started fairly locally to me in Alabama. But once media coverage began to find out about the project and write about it or share it on, on the local news or something, they, I would get emails from all over the place, all over the country and literally hundreds. And so I would just kind of sort them into, uh, states first. And, um, as I had the means to travel to them, I would kind of pick out a route that I wanted to go. For example, last year I, I covered, uh, made a big loop in Florida going all around the coast of Florida and then, a another month long road trip up to, um, New England and back and just meeting as many as I could during the time that I had to, to travel to them. So oh, it's, wow. it's mostly, mostly by media and, and, and social media, um, uh, getting those contacts out to me. You know, I haven't had to look very hard myself. Now, and we're also receiving a lot of questions on the live stream as well for you. Um, but first, Kim says hello from Maxwell Gunter Air Force Base. Julie, who's tuning hello. in from Arizona asks, what's the best part of your job and also what's the hardest part? The best part is always meeting new people and learning those stories, uh, whether it's a veteran who was a cook or a driver in the service or an, maybe an army nurse, it doesn't really matter. I include them all because they all have their wonderful, great stories. The hardest part is since I spend a few hours with them, at least, I kind of get to know them and, and um, close to them. And then I'll, when I hear that they've passed away, that's, you know, I know it's going to happen, but it still always hits hard when I find out that somebody has passed away. Connor also asks, or he says, thanks for taking the time to speak with the military community today. Um, were there any veterans who you photographed whose stories um, stick out with you in particular. Yeah, there's so many and, and that's hard to pick out just one, but I think one of the most sensational stories I think I heard besides those who were medal of honor recipients and, um, or one silver star, bronze star, there's one that 
I always remember because I, I became very close to this gentleman too, because he was in a living in a, a veterans home about 30 minutes uh, away from where I live. And so I went there to meet actually several veterans, but this one stood out uh, because I greeted him and he told me he was on a B-17 bomber in the European theater. And I said, oh, really? And he said, yes, I was a pilot. And my eyes got really big because you know, growing up as a kid, I was fascinated with B-17s and you know, hearing about stories like the Memphis Bell and others and the movie 12 o'clock high. But this guy um, told me, yes, we were shot down on our 19th mission. Uh, he was flying over France in um, spring of 1944. He encountered a lot of flak over or near the target and um, they were hit. It started a fire in the forward part of the plane. There was a lot of smoke. Uh, the pilots couldn't see the controls in the cockpit, you know, opening the windows didn't clear the smoke. They couldn't do anything to, to stop the smoke or, or wherever the fire was coming from. So they made this, the decision to bail out. And as they were getting ready, he was getting ready as well in the cramped cockpit. They don't have room to, uh, to wear a parachute. So he was down in the forward part of the plane with the parachute holding it in the strap. There was an explosion on the plane and it blew him out of the plane. Um, and he's just holding that strap of, of the parachute pack um, in his hands and falling from 26,000 feet. Um, temperatures at that altitude outside the plane are about 35 below. and. So he was falling, struggling, um, and he said at about 3,000 feet, he was able to have that parachute on, on his body as much as he might need. Pulled the ripcord. He said when the canopy of the chute opened, you know, his boots flew off. And so he landed in a, a field in... France and um, kind of hid out as much as he could. He saw um, a French farmer kind of looking around and he took a chance that um, he would be friendly and um, certainly he was. Two other crewmen on the plane survived. The others, the other uh, seven did not. And Fortunately for the three of them, they were able to hide out with the French farmers and the French resistance for six or eight weeks until they could meet up with uh, allies who were coming through after uh, D-Day. Um, wow, it's just well, an incredible that. story of survival. That is a crazy story. Um, Tari, she's watching from Germany. Chris Ward says, this is so cool. Edward's watching from the Philippines. Um, Tari also says, thank you for telling their stories. That is important. Um, let's see here. So Robert says, my dad was a World War II veteran, but didn't talk much about his time in the service. Do you hear from veterans' children who um, learned something about a parent through your project? Yeah, almost every time. they'll the, there, there might be a, a, a family member who's present at the interview. Uh, observing and, and they'll tell me that they'll some of the stories that they're telling me they didn't hear um parts of the story they might have known some but they always hear something new and even if uh, they didn't it's just amazing for them to be able to um have their their parent or a grandfather whoever it is to uh, to be a part of sharing this you know, with the world, um, basically, to hear their stories. 
It's a proud moment. Oh, I, I know you're uh, kind of solely focused on uh, World War II. Do you, do you plan on expanding it to other uh, campaigns or, or kind of war errors at some point? Some of those I've met have overlapped, um, you know, where they served in World War II, then in Korea, and then in Vietnam. So, and especially with my, my dad was a Korean veteran, I would like to expand it to those veterans as well. But I think with the sense of urgency, I'm focusing only on World War II right now. I think uh, in the next few years, though, I'll get more of the Korean and, and Vietnam veterans included. Okay. It has been an honor speaking with you today, and thank you so much for sharing um, all of the stories, just a few stories, actually. Um, the one about jumping from the plane, I'm just sitting here thinking, like, when I think I'm having a bad day, I think I'm going to go revert back to that story and think about that, because that's amazing, and that's true fighting for survival to get back home. And um, where can our viewers go to learn more about Portraits of Honor? The main website is portraitsofhonor.us. And they are, um, um, there are links there to um, the veteran interviews. That's actually on a YouTube channel. Um, you can look, look up Portraits of Honor on YouTube but it's linked from the, the website. And um, that's the best way to, to see more of these. And I, I have almost all of the veterans uh, portraits on the website, but I'm always adding more and more of the uh, video interviews as well. So you can, you can just subscribe to that and weekly or monthly, you'll see new interviews all the time. And since Portraits of Honor is also partially funded by donations, can our viewers go to the site to donate as well? They can. There is a link on there. I started this, you know, self-funded uh, a few years ago, but I knew that when I was getting so many leads around the country that I was going to need help um, traveling and getting to these veterans um, in other states. So I started to go fund me account and um that's a, a very good way to to contribute um and probably the best way because you know that's that's what's linked from the website awesome awesome and uh, thank you for that information and, and for our chief chat viewers this episode will be available on youtube and spotify you can rewatch with your friends or catch up with past episodes also be sure to join us back here at 11 a.m central on Monday, November 7th, when we have Army veteran and motivational speaker Travis Mills on the show. Um, we're also going to have on November 17th, excuse me, on November 17th at 11 a.m., a Medal of Honor recipient and author, uh, retired Lieutenant General Robert Foley, joins the chat. So we got, we got, we got some, uh, you know, some awesome military um, interviews, you know, leading up to Veterans Day uh, coming up. But uh, Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we we absolutely support you and what you're doing. And uh, we love that you're out there, you know, telling us the stories of, of all our veterans from World War II. It's, um, you know, the, the, those those men and women blaze the trail for people like me to, to wear the uniform today. So I appreciate you giving them that platform to, 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 to shine and tell their stories. I'm so glad to do it. And it's an honor to be a part of this show and share it with even more people. So I really appreciate it. No, absolutely. And uh, if you don't mind hanging on to after the live uh, so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes. But um, uh, we, like I said, we, 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 we love what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you know, keep sharing your art with the world and telling the stories of the folks that don't get a chance to tell their stories that often, because I'm sure it's very therapeutic for them um, to, to get some of those stories off their chest that they've been holding in for a long time. So thank you so much. And uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Cheap chat out.